we're terrible at secrets at Mozilla, so I think it's, it's known what we're talking about, like it's been in GitHub for a while. Um, and, and there are links here. Um, and we have an IRC channel mailing list. So um, I'm talking about Spidernode, V8 Monkey, and you. Uh, what? Um, Zipao is Paul O'Shaughnessy. He's here. He'll be helping with the Q&A. Uh, he and Rob Arnold and Sean Wilshire decided to do this crazy thing of, I um, hope you can read that, put the V8 API around SpiderMonkey and put it in Node. So V8 Monkey is the V8 API for Spider Monkey. And Spider Node is a clone of Node that uses V8 Monkey instead of V8. And it works. Uh, but why would you want to do this? Um, well, we, we love V8. Um, it's awesome. It's really good work. And it keeps getting better. And um, we also like the other open source engine of Note, uh, WebKit's JavaScript Core. Uh, the closed source engines, we don't know about them. Um, SpiderMonkey is very old. It's something that I wrote as a second engine at Netscape. Uh, when I was supposed to be helping ECMA standardize ES1, I actually took time to do this and got in trouble with my bosses. But the first engine I did was such a rush that it needed to be rewritten. So SpiderMonkey is very old. And um, as one of the Heathers said, my afterlife is so boring because we've really been through a lot. And we've rewritten it incrementally. It's even now getting a new GC. Uh, a new intermediate representation, SSA, super optimizing, profiling, just in time infrastructure called Ion Monkey and Type Inference, which is going to be awesome. Um, Brian Hackett's doing that one already. It might ship soon. Um, we, we love um, V8 C API. SpiderMonkey sold it was C, so the API is C. SpiderMonkey is used in the Bloomberg terminal. There's 16 million lines of JavaScript there. It's not going away, it has its own API, but the V8 API is nice and clean, C++, with just the good parts, all you need for safety, like templates and uh, storage class auto, constructors and destructors, stuff like that. Um, garbage collection all the way, soup to nuts. The JavaScript language is evolving. How many people were at JSConf? OK, you're going to see some slides, but I'll go fast. Um, for those of you who weren't, the slides that I'll, I'll show next will be of interest. Um, Harmony is coming to ES next, and it it's, means that there's going to be support in V8 at some point. Uh, and we're not doing V8 Monkey to try to sell you something. We are doing it to get the V8 API up and to do some experiments. And if you want to use it, great. We, we welcome people. We're not trying to fork the Node community. We're not trying to compete with V8. I mean, they have an awesome garbage collector. Um, we're not ready to do that yet. Uh, so your Node is a great test bed. It's outside the browser. You can, you can rev it quickly. You can use new features without worrying about IE6. This is why we're doing this. Here's the ESNX stuff that I showed at JSCon. I'm going to go really fast. You've seen all this. It's awesome. Um, some of it is supported with this tracer compiler that Google announced. And there are other such things out there, transpilers. Um, having it supported in your engine is even better because it's fast, and you don't have to run a compiler or a transpiler. Uh, some of the stuff here makes arguments go away, like the rest and spread. Proxies and weak maps are great for doing runtimes and bridges and mirrors and DOMs, uh, node lists. Modules are very much um, aligned, I would say, with CommonJS, but built into the language so that the compiler knows what to prefetch. Iterators and generators, syntax being uh, discussed still, pretty Pythonic. Comprehensions, got to have them. Also, generator expressions. Uh, and then binary data, this might be of interest because we're trying to embrace and extend the WebGL typed arrays, which are similar, quite close to the node buffer built in. And we think that this will be a really bright future because you can finally have sort of C like structs written in a, a almost declarative way, generative types that you can then use to look at binary data. You can have arrays of structs, structs containing array members. You can nest them either way, all the way down. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, it's doing great with WebGL. Uh, you need a way to get string, encoded strings, in and out of this binary world. And we're going to make sure that's part of the new standard for binary data. This is coming in ES Next. Here's something that's not. I showed this at JSConf. I just want to share my thoughts. I, I would like to get better function syntax in. I know Alex Russell and others would, too. It's hard to decide what that better syntax is and exactly how it works. It's hard for a committee to agree on this. It's hard for a bunch of users to agree on it. I'm getting old. I'm getting tired. I think if CoffeeScript has awesome syntax, let's just do that as much as we can. Now, it's a different language. You have to be careful with grammar. 
but I think we can do it, and this is what I propose. And I'm going to propose this at the TC39 meeting in, in three weeks, including fat arrows. So you know what this you get, and binding forms that get hoisted to the block. Uh, and then, you know, maybe we'll get classes that are prototypal in, maybe not. Um, doing your own prototypal inheritance is error prone and tedious. Why not? I don't know. There's, it's hard to agree. People want classes to mean something else. That's part of the problem. Paren free syntax, another thing I'm championing. We want to lighten the C bracket load. Um, it's, it's a relaxation of the rules except for for in where it reforms it. Bunch of operators. You'll recognize some of these from Coffee or C sharp. Default operator, Crockford's championed, uh, assignment form of that. Integer, div, mod, div, mod, and coffee-like egal operators to see if something is exactly the same as something else, uh, is distinguishable from something else. So, you know, negative zero isn't zero. Um, so here's, here's a, a demo of V8 Monkey and Spider Node. This shows uh, a, a library Dave Herman wrote called Task.js, which is based on generators, which are in ES Next in Harmony. This allows you to avoid function nests. And the, the setup is kind of um, some boilerplate and then a little constructor pattern, node read file. And you have to look closely at these keyword named, these reserved word named methods throw and return. That's legal in ES5. It's supported already in, in Firefox and other browsers. It works in V8. What is this wait object? Well, it's, it's the this that was constructed by new, but it has a prototype where we inherit those methods from. And that prototype is set on the first line here. And that is new task.wait. And that's part of Dave Herman's task library. And a wait object is kind of a, a synchronizing device that you use with yield in generator functions. And there, you use task.spawn. You pass a function. It yields read file. And on the very next line, no need for a callback. You can use that data. You can get the results out of it and put it on the console. You have to remember to yield. If you don't, it doesn't work. But the price of that yield is low compared to the price of all those function nests you would have to write otherwise. And so let me see if I can uh, demo this. So here is gen.js. And if I just feed it to node, it's going to spew itself back. As you can see, it reads gen.js. Works. Um, and it's back to the presentation. Another demo, this is uh, another uh, great demo that um, Rob Arnold just threw together. This is even shorter. So this shows how you can use this task.js library and yield to write a loop that you can run as a server. And there it is. I'm going to demo it. I um, have to start it. It's going to be a hello world demo. It's running at that port. Go back. There it is. Reload. Reload, 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 reload. And no function nests. The yield seems to give back results, which you can use right away. The magic here is all in the task.js library, uh, apart from writing, writing yield. So I think this is a win. People complain about function nests. JavaScript is functional. Functions are awesome. But sometimes you don't want to keep indenting and wrapping and bracing. Um, so we're going to have another demo, I think, and some Q&A. I wanted to thank the guys who actually did the work, Rob Arnold, um, forever a Mozillian, just lost his CMU email at Facebook. Uh, he works at Facebook. Uh, Sean Wilshire and Paul Shanessy work at Mozilla. John H. Ford helped us with the build stuff. Andreas Gull's my partner in crime on a lot of stuff, and he's helped too. We have an IRC channel, Pound Spider Node. We have spidernode at mozilla.org, mail and subscribe protocol. Uh, and more demos and questions. There should be a node chat instance running on SSID spider node. There's the IP address. You guys should try to melt it. I think it's on um, Paul's left. Don't tell me it doesn't work. <laughs> restart, restart. So uh, <laughs> So anyway, uh, we're happy to entertain questions. That's pretty much the pitch. We'd love to have people come help us. Will it support E4X? Oh, oh you, you know you want that. So right now, we haven't deconfigured E4X, so it's there. Oh, my god. Uh, SpiderMonkey has a bunch of extensions, right? It has the stuff that's going into Harmony. It has E4X, ECMA 357. It's ISO standard for doing XML in JavaScript. And partly that's kind of cool, because you can write XML literals, and it's not ambiguous. And partly it's this crazy land sort of Java-like thing. Um, so yeah, it's there. We can turn it off. We, we don't advise you to use it. Again, this is totally experimental. You opt in. We're not trying to do anything crazy like make E4X a standard in Node. Uh, where would it be like V8 Node in terms of memory management speed or any areas, what are the focus areas to essentially 
So that's a good question. We don't know yet because we haven't got it up enough, and we're still, in, you know, debugging it. Um, I hope the chat demo will work. Uh, the, the question is, where will Spider Node V8 Monkey beat V8 in Node? And I don't know. And we're not really trying to beat V8. I think competition is good, and I think we can. If you look at certain benchmarks today, like certain Kraken benchmarks, I think even with Crankshaft, if you look at our latest. Um, you know, tra type inference, Jaeger monkey, whatever it is, ion monkey stuff, we're competitive with V8. And we have uh, a non-generational GC, which sucks for when you're allocating a lot of objects that live a short time, so we're moving to generational. But ironically, for certain other workloads, our GC actually is better than, than V8's. It all depends on the workload. That's the, the great story about JavaScript is there's so many workloads, and the browser vendors have been tuning for SunSpider for way too long, and you know, tuning for the V8 benchmarks isn't a whole lot better. We don't even say you should tune for Kraken, which is Mozilla's collection of advanced sort of numerical or combinatorially intensive graphics kernels. We're just trying to get different workloads and see how we do. And there's tons more on the web. There's mscripten, which is Alon Zakai's LLVM, C++ to JavaScript compiler. There's just a lot of stuff out there to measure and optimize for. You'd think we should all be able to optimize for like a representative Gmail workload. I don't know of that benchmark. I don't know how that's done. Um, so V8's awesome, and we're, we're interested in being as faster, faster. Uh, the other thing we have already that V8 hasn't got yet are these ECMA extensions, these extensions that are proposed for Harmony. Some of them are not harmonious. E4X is a sort of a dead limb in the evolution of the ECMA JavaScript standards. But others, like generators, are already there in SpiderMonkey now. Therefore, they're in V8Monkey, and I just showed them. That works. No transpiler required, no compiler no continuation passing style conversion required. That's a reason to use, um, to use V8Monkey now if you want to try it. But again, we're not selling you anything. We're just doing some experiments to try to improve our API, see how life is in Node, and see if this stuff we're proposing for Harmony actually makes sense and helps reduce function nests and improve usability. Will there be threads? There will never be threading in JavaScript with shared mutable state. Yeah, so the question is debugging. Um, we have a bunch of awesome debugging work that's coming along. You can see some of it in Firefox's nightly builds. Jim Blandy, who's based in Portland, is doing this awesome new debugger interface, which is in the JavaScript language, a debug object you can use. So you can write your debuggers in JavaScript, in HTML, and we're doing that. Dave Camp, also based here, is working on the UI for that. It's a remote debugger. Should work in Node. Uh, we have all sorts of features in mind. Memory profiling is hot. We're working on that, too. It's a hard problem. To some extent, Chrome has an advantage that they can have up to 20 or so. Rendering processes, they can exit them if they start leaking. And WebKit is not uh, you know, immune to leaks. But um, until we get our process story done, which is going to take a few more of our fast release cycles, we really do need to dig into memory profiling, and we're doing it. We're trying to say where all your memory is going and who's to blame. We're trying to identify add-ons and web pages. Even though we don't have process isolation, we, we don't just want to blame. We want to fix. So yeah, debugging tools are a big investment for us right now. And it should translate directly to Node. How important do you think is uh, binary object passing for workers, especially on the server? Because JavaScript is non-threaded, so you have to have these other solutions like JSON stringify. But it feels really, really sort of bad when you do that, especially when the data gets larger and the servers will, are going to deal with that. So what are your thoughts in relation to um, Spider Node? Well, so. This is kind of two questions. One is what Node wants to do for clusters of processes that are single-threaded Node servers that communicate. Um, shared nothing, no mutable state. You've got to serialize somehow. Um, the other thing is structured clone is coming along in the browsers. And it currently works through serialization and deserialization as well. But with the new ES5 ability to freeze objects and uh, other ways of deeply freezing object graphs, in theory, if you have some kind of shared address space for multiple isolated threads, you can still pass efficiently these frozen objects back and forth. You don't need to serialize them. You just pass the pointer. It's safe. There's no way that they can form a, a path to mutable state. Uh, that's coming in, in, uh, on the client side, I would say, in Firefox at least, something we're looking at. But I have to say the serialization overhead is not the bottleneck. It's not on the critical path, at least not in our experience with workers. 
Uh, so when you when you created the V8 API on, on top of SpiderMonkey, were there any, uh, you know, the, in the translation to the other API, is anything lost? Did you have to make any, uh, were there any design considerations there? Closer, like closer. Performance or otherwise? Translating, like wrapping Java, the SpiderMonkey API into the V8 API. Did you guys get that? Can you repeat the beginning of that? Like, like, like what did you have, did you have to compromise on anything because of you're trying to shoehorn into V8's API? It, API mismatch, any impedance mismatches. Yes, but. All right, so uh, one of the uh, API impedance mismatches we have is uh, V8 has an API called set index properties to external array that you can call on any object. Um, that's kind of a strange API. It's, it's, um, closer, closer. Oh, closer. sorry, even closer. Okay, so V8 has this API uh, on object called set index properties to external array, which sounds kind of strange and scary that you can take any object and instantly change all its properties. And we can't implement that in, in JS API. There's just no mechanism to do that. So we actually had to rewrite all the call sites. So this, we had to rewrite node buffer entirely in order to make it work with typed arrays because we couldn't manage this one aspect of the API. That's something to drill down on. So we have WebGL typed arrays built into SpiderMonkey. Buffer is close, but not quite. And so we had to kind of change things a little bit. But we'd like to talk. We don't know what the right answer is. It could be our fault. But maybe there's a better buffer in the future. So we're, we're looking to collaborate with Ryan and everybody on that. OK, my question is, what's the memory footprint on an uh, empty uh, SpiderNode server? When it starts, are we, are we leaking memory still? Yeah, we're, we're still leaking memory. We hadn't started looking at this until like last night. Um, and then we finally got the logging set up so we can track this stuff. So we still have some leaks, um, but we're just starting to look at that now. So it's but not great, but it's getting better every day. How much heap memory do you allocate when you start up a new process? So, so Node Chat, when it starts, is running it with about 11 or 12 megs. So I don't know what that runs on V8 offhand, but similar, I think. Yeah. yeah. We believe in releasing early and often, so we're not, um, we're not bragging about any benchmarks or memory profile results, but uh, we're going to keep you posted. Can you do anything with the um, uh, serializing large strings out to a socket? So an issue in V8 is the strings are stored in this really clever in-memory representation, and you want to convert them into a, to put them out to a system call, you know, to write them out to a socket, but you don't have a contiguous, like, flattened buffer that the system call takes. So this is kind of problematic in the V8 world uh, because of the, the clever uh, garbage collection. So is there, d does the SpiderMonkey API uh, offer an easier way to get those out? Because that could actually be a pretty big win. Uh, the question was about strings, and do we have uh, a better way to get flat strings out to system calls without too much overhead? Uh, again, I'm not going to brag. I think we do. Uh, all the engines have tuned their maximum string length to about the same 2 to the 28th, I think, uh, limit. Um, which is, you know, a lot, 256 um, megs. But all of them, because of SunSpider, are doing these stupid, you know, concatenation trees or dependent string tricks to make a stupid loop that goes plus equal on a string and grows it by powers of two really fast. That doesn't really happen a lot in real code. But when you get these big dependent string trees or, or, or ropes, as we call them, and I think V8 and all the others have similar things, uh, then it can be expensive to go flatten that out. And depending on your garbage collector, there can be stricter limits on how big. I, I, I don't know what the issue you're talking about is with, with V8, so I can't really compare. But we, we make flat strings pretty eagerly, and we can make them up to the 2, to, 2 to the 28th big. I didn't quite catch when you were jumping through all the yield stuff. Uh, is there some more information about that? Can yield be used from anywhere or only from inside of iterator type functions? Or It's exactly like Python, except for the syntax, it's, uh, and there's no generator exit object. Uh, you yield from a function, and there may be some extra syntax at the head of the function. That makes it a generator, which is a factory for iterators that can be dot .nexted or dot .sent values. So, there's a separate proposal from Peter Hallam at Google to do an await that works at any level, I think, and certainly at top level. That's a different animal, kind of complementary. OK, great. Thanks. Same underlying uh, infrastructure needed for both. I guess I have one question, which I guess you won't be able to hear. Um, you mentioned that SunSpider and other things aren't really good for server workloads. Are you working on something that is? 
you tell us, you guys are doing the, the node you know, server app development. Uh, we, we need to build better benchmark suites and um, measure all the time. It, it's really important. That's why we're investing in debugging tools, not just memory profilers, but you know, cycle profilers for both JavaScript and your native code. Um, you know, I think Shark or, or whatever instruments is the new hotness from Apple, but we need to get into the JavaScript more. And we need to see where the costs are so we optimize our silly JavaScript engines for the real workloads, not for these synthetic benchmarks from 1998. So help us out. Start a node benchmark uh, collection. What's the build process look like for um, spider node? Is it is it as simple? One of the nice things about Node is it's just basically make make install on on Unix platforms. Is that um, the direction you're heading with Spider Node? Uh, Spider Node is just a clone we're working in. Uh, if we can collaboratively get whatever changes we need up into Node, we'll do it. Um, if we can push the change burden down onto V8 Monkey, we'll do that first. We don't want to change Node if we don't have to. We don't. We don't we're not making a fork. I mean. GitHub is about forking, right? The fork button. It's all good. Don't worry. It's not like Jamie forking Emacs on Stallman. It's, it's not a big war. Um, but but we, we really do aspire to be an alternative under the V8 API in Node. I guess the, the intent of my question was, is, is SpiderMonkey becoming easier to build um, as far as I, I know I've had trouble just getting it to, to even build outside of the Firefox on, on OS X and stuff. Is that, is that improving as SpiderMonkey improves? I see. I didn't hear your question right, and I still haven't quite heard it, but uh, you guys handle this. Use so the mic. Are you asking about the other mic. Uh, make, make, install on SpiderNode? Well, or, yeah. Like, how yeah. hard is it to actually compile it on my own machine? So uh, our fork right now is just configure and make. Okay. Um, and that's it. But so we have made small changes. Like uh, the default, we built in flags for choosing your JavaScript engine, V8 or uh, SpiderMonkey. And we've changed the default for now um, because it makes it easier for us. You know, not, not a whole bunch of configure flags every time we're building. Um, but it's, it's easy. I guess, uh, hey, I guess maybe this might be sort of what was being asked and got uh, getting out with these questions is like, is it configuring and building a spider monkey in tree as well and like statically linking like no, like V8 at all or is it like I have to have installed developer spider monkey? It's, it's in, it's in, it's in, it's yeah, it's it's you know autoconf two one three configure make. Cool. Oh well, well on Mac I do. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's the end of the Q&A session.